So now, uh, proceeding this way, you can create all texts in the project. And now, we're gonna use level dimension tool. In settings, you can define the marker size, rotation, the symbol type you wanna use, pen type, and below, text information. Here, you're gonna use a red symbol and black text. In layer, I'll put arc5 symbols. Okay. Before inserting the level dimension, I will activate the gravity. So here I have, clicking on the, on the symbol, clicking on the arrow, you can set gravity to roof, to shell, slab, or to mesh. It is a function to link the element to the level for which this object will gravitate. So here I put gravitate to slab. I click to insert the level dimension. And it already recognized the slab level. And as it is a linked element, if I change the slab level, it will change as well. So, I'll change the slab level to 108. And you see the level dimension accompanying the change. I will return to the original level. And placing the level dimensions on other slabs, you can see it recognizing different levels. So I copy these parameters using eyedropper. I will, I will turn on gravitate to slab. This external area is 160. On the first floor, 493. Underground, minus 1 and 90. So, it is a very interesting command to have linked and reliable information. Now we're going to see the dimension tool. Go to the first floor where we create a dimension set. Entering in settings on dimension tool. We have some dimension types, linear method, cumulative, baseline method, and elevation dimension used on sections. After we have the marker type, it can be a dot, a line, an arrow. I'm gonna use dot. Here is how the line will be extended. And witness line, it may have a custom height or dynamic height. Here I choose the third option and red pens 113. Text, I'll have two millimeters and black pen. Marker size is the size of the dot chosen above. It is 0 0.5. And witness line length is a fixed size. I'll put 5. And layer, I'll choose arc 5 dimensions. Okay, dimensions are also elements linked to constructive elements. Therefore, it's important to have an organization to link dimensions to walls, to openings, or structure. Here in my example, I will set dimensions linked to the walls. So here, I'll click on the edge of the wall. These three lines, like Mercedes brand, indicates the edge. I click and two marks appears. Go on clicking on the edge of the next two walls in sequence. In the end, I do a double click on empty area. A hammer appears. 
and then you can click where you want the line. Selecting it, it's a group element which you can drag to position. And if you click in the middle of the line, the floating palette appears. And we have some options. You, you could move only one of the lines separately. So here, for example, I can select this option and move just one of the lines. And as it is a parametric object linked to the walls, if I move the wall, you see dimensions changing. So here, for example, changing wall thickness to 25, you can see this change here on dimensions. If I move the wall, you see dimensions changing. I also could link dimensions to openings. For instance, I can use I can use tab key. I'll select the dimension two, and using tab key, you can select window, and then the door. Do a double click, and then you have the dimension. And changing doors or window size, you see that dimensions change together. In the dimension lines, we have some additional functions. For instance, to raise a single dimension in the entire line, you can select only a dot. Press delete and you can erase this dimension. Now I want to add, I will select the line, I will click and in the floating palette we have this option, this plus icon, I can click on a node or on the add to insert new dimensions. Another option would be moving the texts. I can select a single text and picking on the dot, I can move to reposition the text. Therefore, these are the dimension options. Now we're going to see angle dimension. In this diagonal concrete structure, you can draw a line, here it's a dot and dashed line, go to more, select angle dimension 2, and here we have many options, marker type, marker size, so I'll keep all this information, I'll click OK. You need to understand that angle dimensions are made with four points, two points at the first line and two points at the second line. So here I do a first click in this origin point, the second click on diagonal line, third click at the same place as the first and fourth, I'll click at this final point. The hammer appears and I do a final click to place the angle dimension. To finish the class, we're going to do a radial dimension. Go to the ground floor and we're going to insert a radial dimension on this round pool. Just before, I will fix the pool boundary. You will see that I made the boundaries of the pool using this wall. 
it is on ground floor, but it is on a lower level that is not appearing in my floor plan. So here I go to document, floor plan, cut plane, and here I'll put show down to store below. And now you can see the boundary of the pool. So now I'm going to use radial dimension. Entering on settings, we also have options for markers, pens, and text. I'll keep the information. OK. Click on the circle. The witness line is displayed. And then you click to insert the text.